give him a kiss on the cheek, and basically just fall, drop dead there, and faint because of Frank Sinatra and how famous he was. And he simply said to his manager, "Take care of it, Lee," who was his manager at the time. I never used to like Frank Sinatra before, but uh, recently I've had a, a grown appreciation for him. And I really do think he's one of the most fascinating people in American history. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. His birth name is Francis Albert Sinatra. He was born on December 12, 1915 in Hoboken, New Jersey. Frank's mother was very, um, she was kind of dirty. She was involved in some of the crime in, the, in Hoboken. And she was involved with the mob a little bit, but she always provided a good living for him. And she always put food on the table and gave him money. <coughs> Uh, he, he became part of the Hoboken Four through her. She set him up with this a cappella group called the Hoboken Four. They got onto a national TV show and uh, had uh, a hit on a Billboard 100. The Harry James Band was one of the most famous bands at the time in the 1930s. And as a young man, he got to sing with them. He recorded the song From the Bottom of My Heart, which became a hit with the Harry James Band. And he didn't have a set position in the band, but he just sang with them. And Harry James was still the, uh, the leading act, and people still know him. But he, he started to grow as a musician, and people started recognizing him. After Harry James, he got, when he got more recognition, he moved on to the Tommy Dorsey Band, where um, he recorded over 40 songs in one year, that uh, about 15 of them ended up on the Billboard 100 list. Uh, many people believe that he was related with the mob because of his mother and because of New Jersey. And there was a contract with the Tommy Dorsey band that ended up being broken. And Tommy Dorsey was upset about it and didn't want him to leave. But he ended up leaving uh, suspiciously. And Tommy Dorsey just dropped it because um, there are accusations that Frank Sinatra paid a mom, mob member to pay Tommy Dorsey to uh, let go of his contract. But as Frank Sinatra got older, uh, he wasn't appealing as much to young women called uh, Bobby Soxers. And so uh, he, to rejuvenate his career, he moved on to movies. Sorry, not, not yet. Um, first, <laughs> first he did his solo sessions, which was uh, with Capitol Records, and he didn't know. Uh, it, it, those weren't very successful, but then he moved on to Columbia Records, which uh, he did, I've got, not, not I've got you under my skin, but he did many times with Columbia Records. Like I just mentioned, the Bobby Soxers, they were young women that were not, um, that were like teenagers, and they got their names from the socks, the socks that they were wearing, the skirts that they wore. Um, so he appealed to them. Like I said, after that he declined, and he didn't enter World War II because um, he had a, uh, a problem with his uh, bat, and he couldn't enter the military. And everybody, uh, all the soldiers in the military, most of them said, joked around that they didn't, uh, didn't like him more than they didn't like Hitler because he was at home making millions while they were over there fighting. He did a movie called From Here to Eternity. This is where he got into movies. From Here to Eternity, it was, that was about Pearl Harbor, and this uh, started the rebirth of his career as he got older. He went on to Capitol Records and did the song I've Got You Under My Skin, which was the number one hit. Uh, Only the Lonely was a record that he did, and that whole album uh, reached number one on Billboard charts and is can, some people consider one of his best albums. He started uh, a record company called Reprise Records by himself. And the first uh, album they put out on Reprise Records was an album called Ring a Ding Ding. And although it didn't reach number one, it did reach number four. So he still considered it a success. About rock music, he didn't. He wasn't very fond of it. And at some points, he even criticized Elvis a lot. One thing he said of it was, his kind of music is deplorable and it's a rancid, rancid smelling aphrodisiac. But yet he would go on to record uh, such songs as Mrs. Robinson and by uh, Simon Garfunkel and something by the Beatles. Count Basie and Quincy Jones were two uh, orchestra leaders and uh, producers that he worked with. And he did an album called It Might As Well Be Swing, uh, which is also has some great songs on it, like Fly Me To The Moon and I Wish You Love. And many people believe that that is one of his best 
best albums as well, along with um, I've Got You On My Skin. Um, my Way was also his most famous song, most likely, but he recorded that later, and serious Sinatra uh, fans know that that's not one of his best songs, and it's just his most popular because it was in the 70s. And he also did That's Life, which was, uh, was on the same album as My Way. He retired at the age 55 um, after 36 years in the music business in 1970. But that was just from recording and performing. Although he retired, he continued to do what he loved. Um, and he performed at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas many times. And there's many pictures of him. Um, he's, he's older and he's lost a lot of his hair, but he's performing up on stage at Caesars Palace. He did an album called Trilogy, Past, Present, and Future, where he recorded, re-recorded a lot of old songs, recorded uh, some, some popular songs at the time, and recorded future songs that he had just written. And he received the Kenny Center honors in the same year that Jackie Kenny did. His last performance was on February 25th, 1995, and that was the last time anybody ever see, saw him sing. He died May 14th, 1998. I'm sorry. Yeah, May 14th, 1998. And was uh, awarded the Legend Award at the Grammys by Bono. And Bono called him things like Chairman of the, Chairman of the Bad and told people and, you know, announced that he, he wouldn't mess with Frank Sinatra because he was one of the best there ever was. Uh, on May 13th, 2008, it was declared National uh, Frank Sinatra Day because that was the day that the um, mayor of Hoboken once said, No other vocalist in history has sung, swung, and crooned and serenaded into the hearts of young and old. 